Okay, so we have the photogrammetry here, and I'm going to talk a couple different techniques on how to kind of break this down and make it a little bit more usable. And a couple, this one actually turned out to be a little bit easier than I expected, so as things come up that might be a trouble area and other examples, uh, I'll talk about that. So here's our original here. I'm going to go ahead and go to duplicate, and I'm going to hide this one. We're going to use this one to project back to, but this one here, just to make it a little bit faster and easier to work with, I'm going to grab Z plugin, decimation master, and go ahead and pre-process current. And I'm going to go ahead and knock this down to like 100,000 polygons. So we're going to lose a lot of detail, but really I'm just using it to maintain my forms here and make it a little bit easier for the operations like close holes to work without crashing. So speaking of close holes, surprisingly, if I go to geometry, modify topology, and hit close holes, it actually works fine. So we've got our main mesh here, and then we've got this closed hole here. So what I'm going to do to kind of clean this up a little bit, because it is a little bit funky in here, I'm going to control shift click on the holes closed operation. I'm going to go ahead and do a poly group, auto groups. And now I can isolate these one at a time. So this back piece here, I'm going to isolate it. Control click to mask, control shift to bring everything else back. Control click to invert that mask. And now I can go through here and give this a little bit of thickness so that when I go through and dynamesh and do some of that stuff, it will behave a little bit better. Because I'm going to do is like if I if I went through and Z remesh this now, Z remesher would pick up all of this nasty overlapping, underlapping geometry, and it would not like it very much. So I'm basically going to go through and make it nice for Dynamesh while maintaining my poly groups and uh, look for any other problem areas here. Alternatively, what you could do instead of doing this whole masking thing is um, so since we have a poly group here if I go over here to my brush settings and go over here to auto masking I can crank up this mask by poly groups just make sure that the first poly group you click on is the one you want to move not the green one um, but any of these other poly groups in here so you can very quickly just go through here and kind of just clean up any of this stuff but this looks fine so now that I have this I'm gonna go ahead oops and I'm going to control shift click my main mesh here and I'm going to control shift drag to invert that. I'm going to hit control W to group all of these and back into one um, group here. So now I've got my main mesh and my closed holes mesh. And what this stuff's showing, what I'm going to do is go to geometry and dynamesh. And I can turn off project, turn off blur. We'll try resolution 128. It's a little bit low. I'm going to do 256. I just want to make sure. I don't, it doesn't have to be amazing. It just has to be pick up as much detail as I want to without going crazy. So I'm going to up at the 256, turn blur off, hit Dynamesh, this one's better. So now we maintain our poly groups, which is important. So, and then also got rid of some of the crummy uh, overlapping stuff in here. And I'm actually going to clean this up a little bit more. So I'm going to grab this one here and I'm going to run another auto groups on it. Uh, looks like it's all one. Oh. Okay, that just uh, it just made everything purple. Uh, for some reason, okay, we can just do this. Do another auto groups here. That's really weird. So it's giving me this as a separate poly group, but it's making it the same color, which is not useful. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and group these together. So control W. And everything else looks fine, like it should be in its own. Okay, that's cool. So we still have our main mesh. And we still have our closed holes meshes, only it's a little bit cleaner than just the pure one. I'm actually going to go ahead and... Um, so this one here. One thing you can do is go over here to poly groups and you can do merge stray groups. And that'll clean up a little bit of those little stray groups in there. Make it a little bit cleaner. So anyways, all of this was leading up to me uh, having a main mesh and a closed holes mesh that I can project on. Now, if you're just doing geometry, all you need to do is go ahead and take your main mesh, project, and then subdivide, take your main mesh, project, and subdivide, and that'll get your geometry back with some closed holes that are nicer than what you would have had without closed holes. Um, if you want to be a little bit fancier, what you can do now is take your Dynamesh here and go to your Z Remesher. And we're going to go Z remesh. We'll give it a target polygon kind of 15,000. I'm going to take my adaptive size, put that at zero. I'm going to do keep groups. And I think that's all I need to do. And I'm going to hit Z remesh. And it seemed to work fine this time. There is a chance that it'll error out on you. So you might have to go to mesh integrity and click fix mesh. Or you can always take the Dynamesh, export it, re import it. And then when you re import it, ZBrush will say, hey, you have some 
nasty geo do you want to delete it and you can hit yes and that'll kind of clean it up too so anyways we now have uh, a mesh that we could actually UV if we wanted to and to get our detail back what I'm gonna do is I have my lower res showing and I have my higher res or selected I have my higher res showing I'm gonna go here to project and do I'm gonna control shift click my main mesh and hit project all I'm gonna control shift click to bring everything back hit control D control shift click my main mesh again hit project all control shift click in my document to bring everything back control D control shift click my main mesh project all and I'm just gonna keep doing this until I get all my detail back. And once that's done, if you want to test it, you can turn off polyframe, go into solo mode, and you just click back and forth between these two. And of course you want to hit Control Shift click to bring your meshes back. So now here's the one with just the scan data, and then here's your scan data with the closed holes. And at this point, you have a couple different options. So you can actually have subdivision history so it's a lot easier to go in here and kind of smooth out also another thing you might want to do is hold on shift and go from smooth to smooth stronger which you probably don't have auto loaded so I'm gonna to go to brush smooth and you can load up smooth stronger which will actually give you um, the ability to smooth pretty well on a high-res mesh you can run a clay polish and you can try doing it at different resolutions in here if you just want to do an overall clean, you can actually separate the jaw out or any problem areas or isolate them visually. You know, if you just want to run a clay polish on something that's visible, you can do a polish by features, but I don't think that's really going to help you. Another thing you can do is you can drop it down to subdivision level one. And if you do want to go ahead and uh, UV this thing with subdivision level one selected, go to your Z plugin and we'll go down here to UV master. And I'm going to turn off symmetry, turn on poly groups. I'm going to hit work on clone and then I'm going to hit unwrap. And I'm going to hit flatten. And if you want to, you can actually separate out this jawline, this jawbone here. So if I unflatten that, if you go ahead and separate this out as its own polygroup, which you should be pretty easy to do, um, that'll UV a little bit better. As well as, um, let's go ahead and just do an auto groups on these ones to kind of clean up some of these nasty uh, polygroups. So now if we do another unwrap and flatten, yeah, all those little nasty things got uh, pretty much cleaned up. So, anyways, you could do that. Let's do an unflatten. So if you do like those UVs, you can go ahead and do copy UVs, go back to your working mesh here and do paste UVs. I'll paste your UVs on there. And then we're back where we started with our subdivision history. So now this one actually worked pretty well because the holes, the closed holes function worked uh, pretty good. If it didn't work, what I would have had to have done is instead of instead of running a close hole, let's just go ahead and do it. So I'm going to hide this one and let's see if I could still, if it's still processed. No, I'm going to pre-process. Maybe because I forgot to dupe this off, I'm going to go ahead and hit duplicate. And then I'm going to go ahead and knock this back down to like 100k decimate. Oops. Let's do 100k to this one. There we go. So now we have our original high res here. Then I have our decimated one here. So now if it was giving me trouble with closing holes, I could Z remesh at this point. So I'm gonna go down here to Z remesher. Um, we'll do the same thing, target polygon, polygon count of 15, adaptive size down to zero. Uh, we don't need to keep group songs, it's all just one group, so I just hit Z remesh. And the only reason I'm doing this, and in fact, before I do anything else, let's go ahead and turn this original one back on and just do a quick project just to make sure I grab that detail back as much as is possible. So the only reason I'm doing this is just to give me simpler geometry to work with so I can go in here with some of these um, tools in here and maybe go close concave hole and just close these things out. Um, as well as if I wanted to, I could actually, so see how these are kind of linked? I can go in here and do a delete single poly so I can kind of separate these things out. Whoops. And I don't know where the teeth are in here, but um, it actually might be easier just to hold down Alt and just drag, and then I'll get you a line, and then you can just do a delete a poly, and I'll just delete all those. And I'll go ahead and delete these ones. So I'm basically just separating the jaw out from the upper head. So if I click, oops, and now if you control shift drag over a little piece of that, do control shift A, that'll grab the whole jaw, and then I can hit control W to make its own polygroup. 
And if I want to, I can actually split this off into its own subtool. So we'll go ahead and do a split hidden. Now at this point, uh, if I want to just give this thickness, I can go to Q mesh, or actually let's do a extrude, it'll be a little bit cleaner, and then polygroup all, and click and drag. And if it ever bugs out on you, just make sure you go to delete hidden. Geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Sometimes it'll bug out on you. And now it'll work. And then of course I need to go in here and flip it. So display properties flip. So now I've got a mesh with the edge poly group and an inside poly group and an outside poly group. So I can actually, I can make this bigger or smaller. I can go in here with my brush settings set to mask by poly groups at 100 or just mask it out manually and go in here and do any kind of thickness that I want. And now that I have that, what I can now do is I show my high res and I show this low res jaw and then you, of course you just want to isolate that outer low res jaw, hit project all, bring everything back, hit control D, isolate that lower jaw again, hit project all, bring everything back, control D, isolate that lower jaw, project all, bring everything back, control D, isolate the jaw, project all, et cetera, et cetera, until you get all the detail back. So now you have a jaw that is has the detail projected on it as well as an inside mesh. And if you want to like totally clean up this inside mesh, you can isolate it and you can do a polish by features open circle and that'll just polish the hell out of that and that's under deformation uh, polish by features and then just click that circle to make it open circle. So if you wanted to like 3D print without a whole lot of detail in here, you could do that. And so that's a way to kind of give this stuff some sort of thickness with an outer outside poly group to project with. That might be another option you want to do instead of like closing the holes in here. You can actually isolate this whole jawbone out and do the same thing for the top of the head. Another thing you might find of interest is on this stuff here, you'll notice that in the original scan data where the photogrammetry was basically where it was well lit, it looks great. Where it wasn't well lit, this is just a bunch of noise that got picked up. So what you can do to alleviate some of that without completely just hosing your mesh here, I'm gonna isolate the jaw. One thing you can try to do is go down here to masking and do mask by smoothness. And then you can try doing like a polish by features where it's not smooth or maybe inverting that. And then polish by features where it kind of gives you pinpoints. I don't know. Maybe play with that. Let me go ahead and invert that and just do a mask or a polish by features. So that'll kind of mask it where it's smooth or not smooth. And then you can kind of just dumb that back a little bit. And that'll kind of get rid of some of that noise. So here's the jawbone now as opposed to the original jawbone, which was like full of this kind of stuff. And now it's still got some detail, but now it's a little bit more workable. So. And one more thing before we go, uh, if you did get this from photogrammetry, you chances are you'll have a texture map on here. So what you would need to do, I don't have the texture map for this guy, but what you need to do is go ahead and uh, bring in your texture map. That would be basically texture, import, and then go ahead and import your texture. And then make sure you go to texture, flip vertically right here. And then make sure you go down here to the texture tab texture map here, go ahead and grab your texture, that'll load up your texture on your object correctly, and then you would have to go to poly paint, and then do poly paint from texture, that'll transfer your texture map to your poly paint, now you will, because it's the, it's not based on a texture map, uh, it will need to be a pretty high resolution mesh, so what you might need to do is go ahead and subdivide your scan data if you can, uh, to get as many points as possible to transfer that color information to, and then what you can do is while you're projecting, so say you have this and it has polypane information and you're projecting it to something else. While you're projecting, it'll ask you, do you want to project the polypane information as well? And just to make sure it does, turn on RGB while you're projecting and that should pick it up. Uh, again, I don't have the texture map for this thing, but that's another thing is you could project not only the geometry detail, but you could also project the texture map detail. And then that would be mapped to your new UVs on your scan data if you did go through the Ziri Mesh and UV Master. So now you would could have a new UV map for your color map, your geometry normals, all that good stuff.